course, we have a problem that the higher user households are significantly overcharged because, uh, because uh, there is an attempt to collect surcharges to help uh, finance the subsidies. So, of course, because of that, electricity price is, in fact, the talking point in many seminars because we have to accept the fact that decision makers, opinion builders, perhaps you and I, all of them are in the higher consumption bracket. So we think, in fact, for us, it is true that our electricity bill, if it exceeds about 180 kilowatt hours a month, is in fact very expensive compared with other countries in the region. And this is that comparison. So in my pool of countries in this comparison, uh, and if you are a customer using 600 kilowatt hours a month, of course, you must have an air conditioner and a few other uh, uh, energy consuming appliances to use for 600 kilowatt hour. Sri Lanka is only second to South Korea. All right. So this is the spectrum of issues that are in hand if we ever try to do reforms to the electricity pricing structure. We need to have this information, monitor this information, and build opinion as to how are we going to resolve this issue of large subsidies going into a large number of customers being attempted to be financed by surcharges on a few customers. One more point on this issue before I move on. Um, this graph, which I show very frequently, shows the structure of household electricity consumption. What it shows is that for several, uh, for three milestone months, the most recent is February 2020. This is household electricity consumption per month. To start with, I have to say the February 2020 bar does not go as much as 100%. And the difference is about 6.7 or so. Would you believe that 6.7% of households in this country are recording zero consumption? In fact, I was also surprised. I checked and double checked. I thought this must be uh, accounts that are inactive or houses that have been demolished, houses that were removed during tsunami. No, no. This 6.7% households are paying a fixed charge. Somebody, it's an active account. The meter is being read. A fixed charge is being paid, but the house is closed. And you will see the, the shortage uh, over, the, over the three years that are covered in this bar has been increasing. So increasing an increasing percentage of houses are closed. Anyway, that's uh, more food for thought uh, for, for a further discussion. But my focus here is that 70% of households use less than 90 units a month. Now, 90 units is nothing fantastic. Possibly this household does not, possibly does not have a refrigerator. Even if they have, it must be a small one and very sparingly used. Otherwise, they would not be able to manage with 90 and their monthly bill will be less than 860 rupees. Of course, severely subsidized. So moving on, this is what I said in the earlier, earlier slide. I will move on. What is the cost structure of electricity? Because in any business, we should be able to separate out the production cost, long distance transmission cost, the distribution costs, and other financial expenses. So this is once again, the information approved and published by the Public Utilities Commission. So, what happens uh, once in six months is the electricity suppliers submit their costs, of course, a forecast, and the Public Utilities Commission does the evaluation and then approves these costs. So this is a summary of the cost structure. Unfortunately, the latest one I can find is uh, 2019. Since 2019, we should have been publishing 2020, uh, two six months windows as well as the first six month window for this year, and it is not being published. So uh, I think we are gradually going towards a regulatory system failure, not only, not only a power system failure, but a regulatory system failure seems to be imminent by the absence of publication of this information. Anyway, we will rely on the available information. As you see, let's look at the 2019 data. The, the fixed costs of power generation is three rupees 12 cents. 
simply what is the total fixed cost divide by the sales it's 3 rupees 12 what is the total fuel cost of thermal power plants and the cost of energy purchases from renewables divide by the sales 1392 transmission 83 cents distribution 372 so therefore looking at these numbers what i have to say and also looking at the similar numbers in other countries is that our 1392 is significantly on the high side we should be doing it at less than eight rupees and our 372 is also on the high side so therefore these are the two numbers internationally that are way out and what are they fuel costs and renewable energy purchase costs then the costs of distribution we move on i will of course i don't have to say that the oil fired power generation is so expensive you saw it in the in the diagram i don't have to re-emphasize it any kilowatt hour of electricity coming from an oil fired power plant is more than 25 rupees but i thought i will highlight the costs of renewable energy because there's a there's a common thinking that renewables are cheaper but as you see this is from the 2019 published information published in great detail plant by plant technology by technology in fact month by month is published in the public domain so see the numbers the mini hydro fleet came at 1518 ground mounted solar 2285 biomass sustainably grown biomass which we call dendro power 2268 biomass from waste 1096 and wind power 1952 so if i tell you that this electricity has to be absorbed into the grid transmitted and distributed and marketed meters read and sold at an average price of 17 rupees then there is a problem because all these power producers small power producers put together it's 17 rupees weighted average and the rooftop solar is 22 rupees and the weighted average of these two 1740 this is these are commercial projects 22 rupees is from your roof and the average price of renewable energy is 18 rupees then we add the fixed cost of 767 remember fixed costs of generation transmission distribution why do i add the generation because when the renewable energy power plant is not there there has to be another power plant to take its place so that power plant has to be maintained uh, invested on you know, loans paid for and the staff have to be there so therefore there is a shadow generation capacity cost for renewables so when you add everything it is 2567 so the national average selling price was 1702 in 2019 the loss is 865 and we think that renewables are very cheap which unfortunately not all right, so the end result of all that is that CEB as the bulk supplier, because the whole, all the profits and losses go and are, are, they get parked at a particular location. And in that location, the loss was 70 billion in 2019. And reportedly the loss last year came down to 45 billion. It is still a loss, but remember that three years, 3.6% reduction in sales, which was actually expected to be to be positive and so therefore approximately about seven percent of electricity that was to be produced was not produced so therefore the electricity production from expensive sources expensive oil sources because the renewables were not stopped but the expensive oils were stopped came down and therefore the loss has come down to 45 billion rupees last year so what's going on now on the negative side, more oil burning power plants are hired. Save for some reductions owing to COVID, more power plants are being hired. More solar PV is being purchased and signed up for 20 year agreements at 22 rupees per kilowatt hour. A, a garbage power plant was commissioned to purchase at 36 rupees per kilowatt hour. No significant progress on the gas imports or coal fired power plants. Uh, I mean, with a sense of urgency that is required uh, by uh, electricity industry in crisis, 
Of course, various utterances that solar will solve the problem of cost and the supply. But of course, as you see, the facts do not support that. Engineering also does not support yet uh, that solar will solve all our problems un unless and until we have adequate research to prove that and that those technologies be commercially available. Of course, on the positive side, uh, the first wind power plant was commissioned uh, late last year. Perhaps it is entering full operation around now with a levelized cost of 10 rupees, whereas some private wind power plants are still being paid rupees 25, of course, based on their contracts. Thankfully, of course, no new agreements are being signed at such high prices, but there is a significant pressure on the political authority as well as bureaucracy to, to reopen uh, these uh, uh, pricing systems, which ended up at rupees 25 for wind power. 